Ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. Well, that's good to know because I just clicked the button, which means we are live, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And an emphatic yay from our <laughs> soon to be contestants. Not smart or good at trivia, but I'm emphatic. You know, that's 90% of the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just being happy to be here. Happy to be here. Yeah. I feel like that should be the motto for 2020. Just, oh. just happy to be, <laughs> happy, happy to, to be, be anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the dog is Actually, a liar. That could be, just wanted that could be 2021's motto once everything opens back up again. Oh yeah. Just oh, it will be, be anywhere. Will that happen next year? <laughs> yes, Tina, it will. Yes, we're starting on a very positive okay. note here. <laughs> it also, will. Also, <laughs> now's the time to share. I don't know if Chris said that already. At least before our birthdays. <laughs> it has to. I'm gonna yeah. die. I'm gonna die. Actually, that could be that could be 2021's <laughs> 60 seconds, Chris. All right. Thank you very much, Al. You always forget that they can't hear me. <laughs> no, actually they can. <laughs> I've been meaning to tell you that. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that the last couple of shows I've gone back and watched, and then every time Al's like, uh, you forget they can't hear me, then I'm always like, ah. like he realizes his mic's on this entire time. stealthy <laughs> Time to panic. 25 seconds. Thank you very much. Uh, so what what are the final questions? <laughs> oh, uh, and well, what are I the don't... answers? Yeah. I just got what a message questions? from, from uh, Rebecca. We can hear you, Al. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I, I completely forgot. I was supposed to tell you the final questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, how much time do I have to give them? Just the just answer. Enough. Just enough. Enough. Time. It's time now. Oh, I am so sorry. I'm, I'm gonna have to get. We'll get to them later at the end of the show. You know why? <gasps> because it's Tuesday night. Your lawyer says he can't leave the house for two weeks, and you can't tell if you've lost your sense of taste and smell or if you're just a bad cook. This is quarantine. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome everyone once again to another wonderful edition of Quarantine, the only game show that has a 90% efficacy rate in all of its clinical trials. My name is Chris Iannucci, so thrilled to be back here once again with you on this lovely Tuesday night for another rousing round of pandemic-themed trivia. And what a show we have for you tonight, specifically because we have two amazing teams who are here from across the country to compete, not just for themselves, but also for you, our wonderful guests. And let's get started by introducing them right now. Up first, we have from the great state of Rhode Island, anybody who's seen our show before, they're no strangers, you know them, you love them. It's Quarantina and the Waves. And tonight playing on Quarantina and the Waves, we have Tina, we have Ooh. Rachel, and we have Kelly, give a big wave for the folks at home, see what I just did there? Get ready, everybody. There's gonna be more of that where that comes from. They're, uh, they're raving about the your haircut, Chris. It is so, so good to see you all again tonight. How have you been? What's going on? What's new? Oh, so much. We're good, we're good. We're hanging out. We're hanging well, in, we're hanging, hanging on. In, hanging out, hanging on. I love it. That's you know. a, a fantastic attitude to have. Well, hanging on. You know, we love having you on the show. We are so thrilled to see what you can do tonight. <laughs> Me but let's too. meet. Let's <laughs> do it. That's the confidence we love here. I'm gonna uh, destroy our, these. I uh, save some nice people people. for the game. Save some for the game, <laughs> right? And uh, your competitors tonight joining us for the first time here on Quarantine. We are absolutely thrilled to have them. Chicago comedy mainstays. We have Devil's Daughter, and tonight playing on Devil's <laughs> Daughter, we have Scott. <laughs> Dangerous with those scissors. Why do you have those scissors? <laughs> scissors. Put those down. Oh, man, I just want to. I want to tell everybody at home. I did not say to bring a, a weapon of choice to the show tonight. Scott's just that rare and to go. And uh, along with Scott, we have we have Garrett. Hey, Garrett, give everybody a wave. And then we have Brad. 
and uh, Devil's Daughter. How are y'all doing this evening on this dark Chicago night? Doing pretty good. I'm ready to cut some stuff. Hey, apparently <laughs> so. Do you do that? Do you do that everywhere you go on all of your Zoom calls, or is that just uh, something specific to our show tonight? Usually, I'm told not to, but you didn't say a word about it. Well, you know what? We'll have to be a little bit clearer in the bylaws, but for right now, it's allowed. So let's see what you guys can do. Uh, so uh, for those of you who have never seen our show tonight, uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, and second, uh, I need to take a moment to introduce our man behind the curtain, the one person that you can't see right now, but you can see what he does because it's our tech guru, our wonderful wizard. It's my brother, Al. Al, how's, it going, how's it going tonight? It's going fantastic. Just so you know, too, your haircut is trending in the chat. Oh, my haircut, really? Yep, you're getting oh, fan, you. fanfares from the fans. Yep. Thank you very much, America. Um, I will <laughs> make sure it doesn't grow very long, uh, or will. Who knows? Let's see what happens. But uh, leave some comments. Let's see what happens. Um, and Al, you're uh, speaking of cuts. It looks like you need some lawn care uh, behind you. What's going on back there? I do. It's just you know, leaving the house is just too much of a task nowadays. So it's it's growing up a, a little bit behind mm -hmm. me, but. We'll, we'll get through it. I'm gonna. I think I might call around and thumbtack or something, see if I can get somebody to come take care of it. Yeah, it's a solid plan. But anyways, thank you to everything <laughs> that you do for us here on the show. We really appreciate. It. We'll check back in with You're you. You're very welcome, and good uh, luck, teams. Uh, so, thank you, uh, thank you again. Well. Al. So, uh, so here's how this works. For those of you who haven't seen the show and for those of you who haven't played before, let me run through the rules really quickly. In front of me, I have some very gently, lovingly handcrafted trivia categories made by myself and our team here at Quarantine. Yes, I said team because this is a real ass goddamn game show. So uh, we have some lovely categories that were provided here about anything that might be going on in the news this week, anything that pertains to the pandemic, the quarantine itself, or any crazy thing that's been happening in this dumpster fire that we're calling 2020. <laughs> so I'm going to ask our teams these questions. Now, if they get the question correct, they get the allotted points. If they get the question wrong or if they run out of time, it means that it moves on to the other team who has an opportunity to steal for half the amount of points. Now, along the way, we have a few extra games peppered in here, but we'll explain those as we get to them. And for those of you who are watching at home, we do have a few things in our show for you to pay attention to as well, where we're gonna be asking you to participate by giving us suggestions or by voting on your favorite answers that our teams give, starting right now with our first audience prompt. So get those fingers ready because here's what we need from you. We're looking for a suggestion of a theme that you would see at a high school dance. So think of uh, Back to the Future, Enchantment Under the Sea, or um, any, any other like a corny, hokey dance theme that you can think of. Put your imagination to the test, and we're gonna have our monitors, Rebecca's in the chat right now, Al's taking a look. We're gonna pick our best suggestions, and we're gonna hold on to those for something a little bit later on in the game. But first, let's get to our first trivia category. Now, we've been paying attention to a lot of things uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, a lot of holidays that people are paying a lot of attention to, but I feel like last week we may have glanced over something that I felt was pretty neglected, and to me it's something very important. National Cookie Day was last week, and I don't know if people ever gave it the amount of attention that it adequately deserves. So I thought that for our first category tonight, we would do something a little sweet for our contestants and see if they know the facts about some of their favorite cookies in a category that I'm calling the cookie jar. So these are all sweet little questions <laughs> about some of our favorite baked goods. Now we sanitized and flipped a coin before we got started tonight. Quarantina and the Waves won that coin flip, which means they're gonna be getting this first question. Round one, all questions are worth 100 points. Quarantina and the Waves, y'all ready for this? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what I like to hear. Your first question for 100 points. This all-time favorite cookie was invented by Ruth Wakefield in the 1930s while running a popular restaurant and inn in Whitman, Massachusetts, the name of which, along with the rights to her cookie recipe, she famously sold to Nestle in 1939. Toll House? So that's, yeah, that's, that's Toll House, so it's the chocolate chip. Nestle's Toll House chocolate chip cookies, please. Final answer? 
Yes. That is absolutely correct. It was the Toll House <laughs> Inn and Restaurant in Whitfield, Mass. Boom! Just give it to him. Boom! Yes. Not fair. Right out of the gate, no questions asked. Born right. in Massachusetts. Fantastically <laughs> done, Quarantina and the Waves. Now over to Devil's Daughter. This is your question for 100. This holiday classic dates back to the 16th century when Queen Elizabeth I decided to employ a royal baker for the sole purpose of making these cookies as personalized gifts for visiting royal dignitaries. Meanwhile, for magical practitioners of folk arts, they would prescribe these as love tokens for young women to help men fall in love with them. What is the cookie that I'm referring to? Gingerbread? Um, I don't is know. Is that what you're thinking? I don't know. What I was you thinking, think? well, I you know think it's, it's got to not... be a brand or just a, a type of cookie specific. And again, I'll, I'll remind you, I can repeat anything in the question for you. If you That'd need. be great. That'd be great. Let me repeat that for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this holiday classic dates back to the 16th century when Queen Elizabeth I decided to employ a royal baker for the sole purpose of making these cookies as personalized gifts for visiting royal dignitaries. Meanwhile, folk magic practitioners would prescribe these as love tokens for young women to help men fall in love with them. What is the cookie that I'm referring to? I'm thinking maybe macaroons, but that's a French cookie, but it's really old. Um, um, we, we think like the sugar cookies you get at the grocery store. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that an option? No. The soft sugar cookies with the. No, no, no. What do you, what is that you your final no, answer? No, no. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will, I'll give you a couple seconds, but I do need an answer from you. Okay. Scott, anything? Let's yeah. say macaroon. Macaroon. Macaroon is macaroon. your final answer? I don't know. Unfortunately, yeah. Devil's Daughter, macaroon is not the correct answer, which means Quarantina and the Waves. Let's see if you can get another one right for 50. What was the cookie I was referring to? It's a love cookie. I don't know, but I actually think they might be onto something with sugar cookies because you can decorate them yeah. and like make people fall in love with you, personalize gifts. Or could wear lady fingers cookies. Okay, I do need yeah. an answer from you. Um, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking ginger cookie. snaps. I have okay, no I'm sorry, point. I need an answer, I gotta call okay. time. Sugar cookie. Sugar cookie. Sugar cookie sugar is cookie. your final cookie. answer? Yes. Yep. Sure. Unfortunately, it is not sugar cookie either. Devil's Daughter, you kind of had it right at the beginning. Gingerbread men. Is it? Queen Elizabeth I mean, the first popular. Gingerbread men. Right. You all made me feel stupid. Oh. <laughs> I just uh, think welcome to the game, baby. Do that. Welcome yeah. to quarantine, Brad, where usually the first thing somebody shouts out and doesn't go with is the correct answer. Uh, <laughs> but no, no team got it right, which means no team gets any points. And we all learned a little oh. something about gingerbread men. And isn't that the real prize here? Uh, it's not. We have a real prize later, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, this one stays with Quarantina and the Waves. This one's for 100 as well. While most people don't associate these cookies with Christmas, many also don't realize that the reason why the traditional box they come in has a string on it is so that it can be hung on a Christmas tree and enjoyed on Christmas Day. What is the cookie? Cookies come in a box with a string on it. Anything from an Italian bakery. <laughs> what are Italian cookies? Uh, uh, Pizzelles? The green ones, the pink ones, Pizzelles, yeah. Um, <laughs> cannolis, those aren't cookies. No, let's do Pizzelles. Okay. Because they're Italian. No flavor. Is that your final answer? Yeah, let's do yes. it. Yes. Uh, it's pronounced Pizzelle. Pizzelle. And that's what unfortunately, I that is not the correct cookie, which means Devil's Daughter, you can get 50 points if you can name the cookie that originally came in a box with a string on it so you could hang it on a Christmas tree. Hmm. I mean, came in a box. It feels like uh, like a like a one of those German cookies, to be honest, because they put shit on trees all the time. Uh, any German thing you can think of? Any cookie? Okay, give you a couple seconds, but yeah. I will need an answer from you. Uh, man, I yeah, I don't know. I, I know, I know the type of cookie it is. Uh, I don't know. Let's okay, just I'm sorry, I need an answer. I'm going to have to call time. On ginger it. snap, ginger snap. Ginger snap, final answer? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, it is not a ginger snap. Uh, it is animal crackers. Barnum's oh, animal crackers in a box oh. with a string. That's right. Uh, they do come yeah. in. in a box with a string, at least until 2018. That's why the box had a string on it, because they Who were a- Who puts on trees now? Well, they used to. Jerks. But people just forgot. Including everybody playing tonight. But anyways, I digress. Moving on to our next question. Uh, this one stays with Devil's Daughter. This one is for 100 points. 
This treat gets its name from the Presbyterian minister who invented it, believing that the cookie's bland flavor hurt people's unhealthy carnal urges. What is the treat that I'm talking about? Oh my god. Um, I know that Kellogg's cornflakes were made to curb people's carnal urges. It's got to be like a really foul tasting cookie, right? I mean, like, a, I don't like sugar doodles, but I feel like shortbread or a butter cookie or something like that would make sense because it's kind of bland. Every cookie makes you horny. There's no <laughs> cookie that doesn't. No, let's just go through the list of what makes us least horny. Which cookie? <laughs> This could take a while, and you only have a couple yeah. of seconds to give me an answer. So, uh, what cookie makes you not horny? Scott, blandest cookie. Name it right now. We'll go with that. Okay. Salt, do you need an answer from you? <laughs> salt Peter cookies. Salt Peter cookies. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Final answer. Final. Fine. Would yeah. never want to eat one of those, and for good reason. But it's still not the right answer that we're looking for tonight. Uh, for fifty points, Quarantina and the Waves. What cookie doesn't make you horny? The graham cracker. Oh, graham. Final answer. Mm. Yep. Right. Absolutely correct, uh, Rachel. Named after what? Sylvester Graham, the graham cracker originally invented to deter horniness. So um, that's 50 points. It, it doesn't that. work. It's not a cookie. Put cinnamon on there. It's called the cracker. <laughs> that's two cracker I'd like to go to the judges. I'd like to go to the judges. Technically I'd like is... to go to the judges. Oh, hold on. Let me check with the judges real quick. Yeah, they said that that's okay. It's two cracker <laughs> questions in a row, yeah. Yeah, can, animal crackers are crackers too. What, oh. We can we can get into the logistics vis-a-vis uh, -vis what makes a cracker and a cookie after the show, and I will clear that up for you, but they are technically cookies. The show's corrupt. Show you that. Get ready for this. All right. <laughs> Last question of the category. Let's see, if, let's see if it's a cookie or a cracker. Uh, this one stays, I'm sorry, this one stays with Quarantina and the Waves. This one's for 100 points. These spiced shortbread biscuits originated in the Netherlands and are typically cut and carved into depictions of windmills and even St. Nicholas himself. But here in the States, most people are just familiar with them as the main ingredient in cookie butter. What is the cookie? Biscoff. It's Biscoff cookie. Well, that's the brand. The that are in the oh, window. it's the brand. Is it called a speculus cookie? Because yeah, speculus. Yeah, speculus, that's it. Yeah, spe speculus. Yes, yeah. spe Final That's, answer? And yes. One of those. Which one is your final answer? Speculus. Right? Do you want the company that makes it or the We're name of the, the cookie? name of a cookie? Spe speculus. So Speculus is your final answer? Yes. Speculus is correct for 100 points. I'm well impressed. Well done. Rachel, you know your cookies. I got to give you that. And that's all I know. Well played. Well <laughs> <laughs> Great job. That's the end of our of our first trivia category and nicely done. Uh, Quarantine in the Waves, I have you with 250 points. Devil's Daughter, not to make a dent on the board yet, but that can change right now in our first game uh, that we're going to be playing based off of our audience suggestion that we just got a second ago. And Al, what was the suggestion of a theme for a high school dance? Shrek the Prom. Wreck the Prom. Shrek. Great yep. theme. Yeah. Shrek or Wreck? With an S, Shrek, bit the old S. S. Shrek. Shrek, as in the oh. movie, Shrek the Prom. Well, I would love to go to that dance. Uh, unfortunately, we're all stuck inside, but what we can do right now is play this little game. And we, we just learned a second ago that gingerbread men were invented uh, as a way to represent visiting dignitaries. That's how they got their start. But, you know, throughout the ages, they've become this thing that we do every year where we just like to try to make some fun outlines and designs and get creative with our with our ornamentation. So I thought we would put our gingerbread cookie decorating skills to the test in tandem in our next game that I'm calling Half Baked. And I say Half Baked, but what I really should be saying is Third Baked, because this is how this game is going to work. Now, you each have a piece of paper and something to draw with. You're going to build a three-tiered gingerbread man based on the theme Shrek the Prom. And here's how this is going to work. Now, if you're looking at our game board, you can see clearly that each player is stacked up one on top of the other in a straight line. And you're each going to be responsible for drawing and decorating a particular part of the gingerbread so that all three of you will make a complete gingerbread person cookie decorated as if it was a Shrek the Prom themed gingerbread person. Uh, so here's how this is going to work. For the head, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one now, but for the head, I have Tina and Garrett at the top of the gingerbread. Yes, yep. And then the body will be Kelly and Scott. Correct. 
And then the legs and feet will be Rachel and Brad. You got it. So you know the section of the gingerbread man that you're supposed to be making. So we're gonna set a 60 second timer and you're gonna do your best to draw the body of a gingerbread person and whatever additional accoutrement you can tack onto it that represents Shrek the prom. And then when we get them back on the screen, you're gonna hold them up and do your best to line them up so that it looks like a complete gingerbread person. And our audience is gonna vote on who did the best job. This is gonna be worth 300 points. So make sure you get those pens working and make sure you really try to dig into the theme that we have going here. Al, you got to put 60 seconds on the clock? It's up. All right, great. And one other thing, you can't talk to each other while you're doing this. So no coordinating amongst teammates. Do your best to, to make those head, torso, and legs look as best as you can, and then we'll see what you come up with. Ready, set, get drawing, because it's Shrek the Prom. Shrek the Prom. I thought that was That's, pretty um, good, yeah. That was a pretty good one, actually, i got to admit. Run, Runner-up was Disco Delight. Ooh, that also could have been a fun one. I feel like it's really hard to come up with a bad prom theme. Right. Because uh, even the bad ones can be ironically bad. Global pandemic prom. Ah, uh, that's just mean. <laughs> I feel like that's just... that's It's prom in front of your Zoom. Yeah. Which Definitely actually... leaving room for the Holy Spirit while dancing, though. 30 seconds. All right, 30 seconds left on the clock. What can our contestants do with Shrek the prom? A prom is like an onion, Chris. He's a, I'm sorry, a prom is like an, oh, because they have, oh, the layers. Layers, Chris. Layers. I'm so sorry. I was slow on the uptake on that one. Ten it's been seconds. A while since I've seen that movie. Ten seconds left, contestants. All right, get ready. And five. What can they do? Four. Four. Three. three two. One. That's pens down. And let's see what we could come up with. So here's what you're going to do as best as you can try to line your drawing up to the screen and see what we can come up with for a completed gingerbread person. Wow, we see a lot of detail <laughs> going on there. Somebody's wearing a necktie. All right, great. So once we get everything lined up, how about uh, let's start with quarantine and the waves. Tina, let's see what you got for your uh, for your headpiece there. And that's a beautiful looking head. But what's uh, what's did you have any uh, time to put some uh, Shrek the Prom themed? Uh, touches to it. No, Chris. It's just a gingerbread man. Because sometimes you need to be uh, individual. Okay, fair enough. And uh, Kelly, how's your mid-piece looking there? And uh, what's uh, what's Shrek about that? Uh, he's got a an ogre cummerbund. All right, great. And then let's see some feet there. Who's got Rachel's got the feet. Oh. Yep. And that's looking like a quadruped. Yeah. Is, and, is it, it's a donkey. And it's a donkey. Yeah. Uh, right. Got a little cummerbund here. Uh, he's got pants that I started to color in, but um, pen was not the way to go. I, I should have gone marker. Well, we don't tell you what we were drawing ahead of time, so yeah. no fault there. No, no, no. no this is on me. Uh, this is totally me. Um, <laughs> he's got a little, little tail um, right. and, and little, little pizzas. And, awesome uh, work. He's a donkey at the prom. All right, awesome work. Well, let's move over to Devil's Daughter and let's see how your gingerbread person came out. And uh, let's see, well, we got um, uh, Garrett. What, how's your uh, how's your head looking over there? You might want to move a little good. closer. And uh, oh, I see some writing on there. What's that say? Yeah, so those are the lyrics to All Star by Smash Mouth, which opens <laughs> and iconicizes uh, Shrek the film. Kind yep. creates a theme. Uh, the gingerbread is to the actual scale of the gingerbread man in the movie Shrek. So not a ton of extra details because he just had eyes and a mouth. Uh, this is the swamp and then the, the dragon um, that also play a big part throughout the whole film. All right, terrific work. And then let's move down to the middle of your gingerbread person. And uh, Scott, looks like you also went for a donkey themed. I if did. I'm not it's, mistaken. It's a donkey. A donkey? It's, but it's, <laughs> it's a donkey, but it's wearing a necktie. Because, you know, you got to look good when you go to prom because you want everyone yeah. to know that you care about your presentation even if you're a donkey all right terrific and then finally last but not least let's see the feet on your uh, on devil's daughter we got brad here uh I and just, i just drew one big foot um <laughs> I, yeah it's just one big foot and then this is a flower coming out because it's prom and oh, it's, it's uh, the uh it's the corsage or the uh yeah yeah and then 
these are flies, and then these are stink lines, and then these are all um, corns and and you know warts on a on a on a, a foot. Yes. These are toenails. You get Terrific. It. It's I like how you made your gingerbread uh, as edible uh, looking as possible, and also as as appetizing as possible. So excellent work there, uh, Brad. All right. Well, great job, teams. Now um, keep on there for just one more second because now it's time for our audience to take a good look at each of those and you're gonna decide for us which one of these is your favorite. So in our chat, make sure you leave a comment of either Devil's Daughter or Quarantina and the Waves for which, for which gingerbread person you like the most. And remember, whoever gets the most votes, your team is gonna win an extra 300 points. So get those fingers going, get in the chat, and while we tally up those votes, we're gonna take a quick break. But before we do, as we like to do every week, here's a little game for you at home to play. See if you can guess who this silhouette is of, and I'll give you a hint. The force is strong with this one. People can't stop talking about this precocious scamp who's always curious and never too far away from a fight. Can you guess who it is? Well, we'll tell you when we come back after a quick word from one of our terrific sponsors. There's a life I thought I left behind me, but some things you just can't escape. You've got a real gift, kid. You just need a little training, a little hard work. You could be a champion. You could be the best there ever was. I don't want it anymore. You're throwing your life away. To what happened to you? What's holding you back? People spend their whole lives trying to be this good. But I suppose no one can force you to play beanbag toss. It's called Cornhole. Welcome back. Could you figure out our little trivia question before we went away on break. Well, if you guessed Melissa Carone, you are 100% correct. What a precocious, precocious little scamp she is. Did you change that? What'd you do? All right, well, welcome back. And uh, we're just about to get into round two where the points are worth double. Uh, but before we do, Al, do we get a tally on uh, who made the best gingerbread person? Uh, believe it or not, we are all tied up right now. I was waiting to see if another vote came in, uh, but Alas, it is two for two right now. Oh, really? All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll, we'll postpone our decision until we can see a few more votes come up in the chat. Can I talk um, to my roommates real quick about something? <laughs> they can log <laughs> something unrelated. They can log on Fred, Facebook the, real quick. All right. Well, well, we will get back to those point tallies in just a second. But uh, before we do, let's get into our next uh, our next category here. Um, now, is that it was about a, cookies? No, it is not, unfortunately, <laughs> Rachel. But you might like be this about one. Cookies? You might like practice. this one because uh, I, I know we just we just played an ad about a, a movie trailer, and uh, I know we've been kind of itching to get out of our houses, go to the movie theaters, but it's still kind of not really safe to do it. So we've been stuck at home watching things, and if you're going to watch something at home for the next couple of weeks, tis the season to be watching some made-for-TV Hallmark holiday classics. And so I thought we would take this next opportunity to quiz our contestants on whether or not certain Hallmark movies do or don't exist in a category that I'm calling check mark. Now, this is a little different than our usual trivia and here's how this is gonna work. In front of me, I have a list of 12 movie titles, each one of them a Hallmark Channel original made for TV movie. <laughs> But some of them are real and some of them are fake. So your job is going to be to tell me whether or not the movie title that I give you is one that is real, something that you can actually watch on TV or something that I made up myself. Now, these are not team questions. I will give each of you individually the title of a movie and you're gonna tell me whether it's real or fake. If you get the question right, you get your team 100 points. As I said, there are 12 titles, which means you'll each have an opportunity to answer two movie titles. Make sense to everybody? Yep. All right, great. So we're going to start off with Kelly. Kelly, this one is for you. Tell me if this is a real or a fake movie title. Your title is An Appalachian Angel. It is real. 
Unfortunately, it is fake. I made that one up, Kelly, so no points awarded there. Let's move over to Devil's Daughter. Scott, this one is for you. Tell me if this is a real or a fake Hallmark movie. Single Santa Seeks Mrs. Claus. Real. It is real for 100 points. Nicely done. 2004 movie starring Steve Gutenberg. Of all people. Ooh, the Goot. Santa, Santa's heir must find a wife before he can take over his Santa-ly duties. Uh, this next one goes over to Tina. This is for you. Uh, your movie is called Christmas Cobbler. Real. Unfortunately, Tina, that's fake. I made that one up. So no Christmas Cobbler for anyone. I know. Chris, you could be making a lot of money watching <laughs> these movies. We'll talk later. Give me a hint. Are you thinking of a dessert or a shoemaker? Well, that was for you oh, to no. decide. Uh, <laughs> it could be either. Oh. But, but I digress. Uh, this next one, meat. going over to Garrett. Garrett, tell me if this one is real or fake. Your movie is titled Window Wonderland. I'm going to say fake. Garrett, I'm sorry, this one's real. 2013 movie about a professional window decorator who falls for her rival while competing for her dream job as a window decorator at a different store. I think Danica McKellar was in that. Uh, actually, I didn't get the cast list for that one, but you're probably Wait, right. did you say widow or window? Window. Oh. Window Wonderland. <laughs> All right, this one goes over to Rachel. This is for you. Your movie is titled The Night Before the Night Before Christmas. Real or fake? Real. It is real. 2010 movie. Santa crashes into a family's house a day early, oh. and the family must save Christmas. You're stupid Santa. <laughs> I know, right? Hitting the nog a little early. All right, this next one, we're going over to Brad. Brad, this is yours. Tell me if it's real or if it's fake. Your movie's called Hats Off to Christmas. <laughs> uh, fake. Brad, this one's real. The 2013 <laughs> movie about a small town Christmas store uh, manager who has to teach the owner's son some rules about life. So no points awarded on that one. Uh, all right, we're going to start over at the top of the order, going back to you, Kelly. Kelly, tell me if this is a real or a fake Hallmark movie. A Reindeer for Rhonda. Gonna be real. I'm sorry, what was your answer? Real. Kelly, Rhonda ain't getting no reindeer because that one is fake. I'm sorry, I made that one up. Oh my god. I know, these are good, right? <laughs> uh, all right, next one, we're going over to Scott. Tell me if this one's real or fake. Oh, Christmas treason. <laughs> fake. Yeah, you nailed it, Scott. Okay, that one's on me, that one's fake. I wish it was real. 100 points for that one. That all right. Good. Going over to that. Tina. Tina, please tell me if this one is a real or a fake movie. It's called Fur Crazy, spelled F-I-R, Fur Crazy. Real. It is real. 2013 no. movie about a woman who hates her father's Christmas tree lot, but she's forced to take it over and falls in love with one of her customers. What a Grinch. I know, right? But by the end of the movie, she's not, and that's why we all love Fur Crazy. We'll all right, 100 points for you. Uh, Devil's Daughter. This one goes over to Garrett. Garrett, tell me if this one is real or fake. Your title is called Joy to the Girl. I'm going to say that's real. Sorry, Garrett. I made that one up. That is completely <laughs> fake. I just said real, too. Couldn't it just be real, though? Yeah. Uh, Garrett, the, it's the ones that sound fake that are real. And the this ones is, that are I know. That sound real are fake. Uh, we'll get to this at the end of the category. I don't want to. I don't want to bury the lead here. All right, we got uh, going over to uh, Tina. Tina, this one is for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, was it Tina or was it Rachel? Rachel. 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 I'm sorry. This one is for you. Uh, please tell me if this is real or fake. Your movie's title is "It's Christmas Carol." Real. Real. <laughs> it is real, what? starring Carrie Fisher. <laughs> It is a uh, it is a uh, version of uh, the classic A Christmas Carol, starring a <laughs> female protagonist named Carol. What a world! Uh, all right, and the last one. Please tell me if this is real or fake. Brad, your movie title is called Candy and Her Cane. I'm gonna say fake. Brad, you're right. I made that one up. That is fake for 100 points. That is an adult film. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you put into it what you want to put into it. And speaking of... That's what she said. Well, you have <laughs> an opportunity Sorry. here for a little extra comedy here because uh, that's the end of the actual category, but we're going to throw some bonus points into the mix here uh, because here's what I'm going to have our two teams do. Uh, each team is going to be responsible for taking one of the fake movie titles that I made up. I'll repeat to you what those titles were. And you're going to give me your best movie uh, elevator pitch trailer for our audience at home to listen to. So we'll have one person on each team. If you feel like you want to step up and do it for your team, jump right in and do it. Other people on the team, feel free to, to jump in and help out as need be. But I'm looking for a, a 30 second elevator pitch for a movie based on one of the fake titles that I came up with. And I'll remind you of what those titles were. They were an Appalachian angel, Christmas cobbler, uh, I'm sorry, A Reindeer for Rhonda, Oh Christmas Treason, Joy to the Girl, and Candy and Her Cane. Uh, so, uh, Quarantina and the Waves, you started off the last one, so we're going to give Devil's Daughter an opportunity to start this one. Pick a fake title and give us your best trailer movie pitch. Uh, do you have one that you um, want to grab? Okay. It's, it's Christmas time in Iraq. And um, and and um, the, the the military is you know really caught up in in, in in dropping bombs on 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 the country of Iraq, and um, Chelsea Manning uh, discovers that uh, there's a horrible war crime that's been committed, but doesn't but but is having a crisis of conscience of whether to um turn to to turn over that data to wikileaks so, so in the data in the wikileaks she also finds all these letters to santa yeah and she's not sure if it's if it's you know american information or privacy like should she turn it over to wikileaks i don't know so she's visited by three ghosts <laughs> of um, dead war criminals <laughs> I'm assuming you went with Oh Christmas Treason. Oh Christmas Treason. Okay, because yes. otherwise, <laughs> I think you really, really might have screwed up the title here. This is Joy to the Girl. Oh, yeah. We're going to get to the cobbler in a second. <laughs> yeah, we're going to melt the cobbler in. All right, cool. All right, well, I'm going to cut you off there because that's your time for that one. But uh, so that was Oh Christmas Treason. And it's it's a half biopic of, of uh, Chelsea Manning's. Uh, uh, let me paraphrase it. Uh, Chelsea Manning's uh, urge to reveal uh, treasonous materials to WikiLeaks while also saving Christmas. Fantastic. All right, so now moving it over to Quarantina and the Waves. You can't use Oh Christmas Treason, but hopefully you could come up with something from one of our other fake titles. What do you got for me? You know, I saw you scribbling. Do you have something? Oh, I saw you scribbling longer. So then I, well, I, was just <laughs> I have like a half idea that I can talk through. Go right. for it. And if we need to Don't jump in, it. we'll jump in. Okay. Uh, Emily is a... a intern for a high fashion company in Paris. She's working grueling hours. She's miserable. There's no way she's going to get home for Christmas. Uh, she, But she does get to work for Christian Louboutin himself. The red soled shoes. This is an opportunity she can't pass up. What does she do? Does she pursue her dream and, and work uh, with, with the highest, you know, to the upper echelon of her industry and, and maybe get an opportunity to work with the man himself? Or does she go home? Does she give up this huge opportunity or does she go home to see her mom who PS has brain cancer and spend holidays with her for maybe the last time? She doesn't know what to do. She's sitting by the Champs-Elysees and uh, thinking uh, to herself out loud as she is wont to do uh, in English, because she doesn't speak French, uh, and a little old man is, is sewing his shoes, his one pair of shoes. Uh, and because everyone in Paris does, he also speaks English and helps him, helps Emily uh, make her decision. Uh, and when she is done telling, her, telling him uh, her story, he is gone. But a pair of new shoes is at her feet and she knows what she must do. But no spoilers. I want to know what she actually does. Not going to tell you. Know, you, can't, you can't give it away at that. All right. So and I'm assuming that was a Christmas goblet. 
You're damn right. Fantastically done. All right, great job, both teams. But now it's up to our audience to decide which Hallmark movie they would rather watch. Uh, who did the best job coming up with something on the fly? Sound off in the comments, and we will pick a winner. And whoever gets the most votes, they're going to get their team an extra 200 points for that category. Speaking of votes, do we ever come down on the consensus on who did the best gingerbread person? We did. Uh, some last-minute votes came in, and Devil's Daughter uh, got the win on the first one. Devil's Daughter, congratulations. That is an extra uh, 300 points added on to your score. Super fans. I will say, if you're going to put Smash Mouth in anything, you're immediately going to be a crowd favorite. So You're an you all-star, know, Chris. Word to the wise. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. All right? hey, I, can't, I can't give away points. That's for the audience to do. But we're going to let them uh, jump in the chat and sound off on which movie trailer they like the best, and we'll get to the results of that in just a moment. But first, speaking of movies... I don't know if anybody was watching the news or heard about uh, the remake of She's All That that they're making, that they actually got into a little bit of flack because they were planning on shutting down a COVID testing site in Los Angeles's Union Station just to film a scene from the movie, uh, shutting out about 500 people, I think, who had scheduled COVID tests for that day. Now, it only took a couple of hours for the internet to respond, and then the, the company uh, who was planning on shutting down the testing site decided to retract the decision. But... In the meantime, there was really some uh, some uproar about the fact that they'd be willing to take over a location like that for the sake of, frankly, you're never going to beat the original on that one, at least in my opinion. But that's besides the point. So I thought we would learn a lesson from something uh, that those producers did, and we would take our next category to examine some other movies that have chosen some poor locations throughout history. And our next category that I'm calling Location, Location, Location. Now these are all films that have, I'm oh, sorry, these are all questions that have to do with films that had problems due to their filming locations. All right, so this first question, we're going over to uh, Devil's Daughter. This is yours. These are all for 200 points now. This film, famously shot on Martha's Vineyard, was fraught with many production difficulties due to the location, none more notable than the multiple onset breakdowns of its main character, Bruce, who suffered from a lack of screen time as a result Although not, although most fans of the film don't seem to mind. I know this one. It's Jaws. 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 Final answer. I'm gonna defer to my teammates. Well, wow, that's confident. All right, Jaws, Jaws is correct for 200 points. Bruce is the name of Spielberg's lawyer, which is very fun. <laughs> also, also the mechanical shark in the movie, which right. makes that. To be, I want to make sure when I wrote this question, Spielberg's lawyer was not the character that I was referring to <laughs> in the question. The mechanical but, lawyer that attacks all those people. Oh, so wouldn't that have been a lot more terrifying of an ending, right? <laughs> We're going to need a bigger courtroom. All right. Uh, this next question goes over to... You don't have, that's a pity laugh. You don't have to do that. No, that is very funny. We're excited. Laura Dina in the waves. This one's yours for 200 points. Without the benefit of modern digital effects to remove landscape, this sci-fi flick had to build all of its sets and transport hundreds of people back and forth to locations so far out at sea that the resulting cost of the film doubled to nearly 175 million. What movie could I be talking about? Waterworld, I think. Oh, is Waterworld, huh? Yeah, I remember it was wicked expensive. Okay, I'll go with you. That's the one Tom Petty was in, right? Yeah, Tom Petty. Yeah. Final answer. Waterworld. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't know if Tom Petty was in it. <laughs> I'm yeah. just guessing you. I but never um, saw it's, it. yeah, it's it's hard it to up. it's it's hard to say dry land is a myth when you can see dry land in the background. It was Waterworld for two hundred points. Yay. Well yeah. done. All right, back over to Devil's Daughter. This is your question. Although this character has been portrayed on film multiple times, most recently by Robert Downey Jr., it was the 1967 film starring Rex Harrison that caused their own location problems when they decided to build an artificial dam in the, in the English village of Castle Combe, angering locals so much that one resident, an SAS soldier, took it on himself to blow it up with plastic explosives and flares. What was the movie? So, gentlemen, we get to have a sidebar, right? We can talk this out? Yeah, that's generally how the show works, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Garrett and Brad, I'm thinking, is it, he said Robert Downey Jr., right? So is it an Iron yeah. Man movie or like a Marvel movie? I don't feel like I know an Iron Man movie Rex from Harrison played, said Rex Harrison played the original, right? I think maybe a Dr. Doolittle thing or something. Yeah, I think it's Dr. Oh. Doolittle. Oh, 
good call. Dr. Good Doolittle. call. And the, yep. Is that a final answer from you? Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Doolittle. Good call indeed. Dr. Doolittle is correct for 200 points. It's called teamwork. Worked it out. <laughs> good thing you asked about that sidebar. <laughs> All right, back over to Quarantina and the Waves. This is your question. This 1987 film starring Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty would go down in history as one of the biggest flops of the 1980s, in part because of filming troubles caused by the director wanting to film on location in the Sahara, despite fears of kidnappings, landmines, and an ongoing civil war. What was the movie? Ishtar. Mm -hmm. Final yeah. answer? Yeah, Ishtar. Ishtar is correct for 200 points. All right, last question of the category, going back over to Devil's Daughter. When director Kevin Reynolds decided to shoot his movie Rapa Nui on this island in order to give the film more authenticity, he didn't take into account just how remote the location was, leading to cast and crew being stranded, sometimes without food, for days at a time. What was the location that they filmed Rapa Nui on? Rapa Nui? I don't, I've never heard of that movie. Uh, <laughs> but it's a remote location. And I think we right. just try and guess an island that would be really impractical to film a movie on. Um, Madagascar, Cuba. Uh, uh, no, I don't know. It's not very far. A uh, couple more seconds and I will need an answer. Let's say yeah. East, Easter Island. Do it. Yeah, I don't know. Easter yeah. Island. Final answer? Yeah. Sure. It was Easter Island. The, nice the traditional home of the Rapa Nui. That's what I thought. Gives the location more authenticity for 200 oh. points. Well done, Love Devil's you, Daughter. Nice work. Love a good answer in the clutch like that. All right. Well, that is the end of the category. And that is also the end of round two. But before we move on, Al, did we get a tally on votes for who gave the best elevator pitch? We did. Quarantina took that one. Quarantine and the waves getting an extra 200 <laughs> points. Like my fable about Chelsea Manning and <laughs> the I thought you had it. both very gripping, I will Excellent. say that. Um, but uh, so it's an extra 200 points for Quarantina and the waves. And looking at the scores right now, I have Quarantina, you have 1,150 points. And just, just in the lead with 1,200 points is Devil's Daughter. So it is still anybody's game, especially now when we're moving into round three, where the questions are worth 300 points. But before we do that, we have one more ad that we would love to show you from another terrific sponsor. Please enjoy. Oh, hey there. I almost didn't recognize you behind those granny panties on your face. Your cloth mask is making you look like a little wimp. You want to be a real man? Toughen up with man masks. We've got all types of manly masks for you. We've got flannel, wood, denim, Kevlar, concrete, sheet metal, guns, car parts, hunting, steak, power tools. My mask can kick your mask's ass. So after you're done picking pansies, cancel your pedicure and head on down to the man mask warehouse. Man mask. Because being safe means acting tough. And we are back. And uh, again, a big thank you to our sponsor. Big thank you to uh, uh, our friend of the show, uh, Nick Marino, who, who did our ads this week. We really do appreciate him sending us that. If you have some ads that you would like to see on the show too, feel free to reach out. We'll show you how to at the end of the show. Uh, but it's now time to get into round three where the points are triple. And we're just gonna get right into the action with our next category. Now, everybody is talking about birds. How high they fly in the air. Sweet how they angels. Oh, hello. I, oh, I didn't yeah. realize you were popping into the show. Um, hello, Christopher. Well, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have never seen our show before, this is our good friend and YouTube host, uh, Chad Seven Gables, yes, who likes hello. to occasionally interrupt our stream. Chad, yes. we didn't realize you were going to be coming on to do a visit tonight. What's, oh. I thought you were still dealing with, um, well, oh, you were doing your show, Someone's in the Kitchen with Dinah. 
Yeah, yeah, I had to stop filming someone in the kitchen, uh, someone's in the kitchen with Dinah, the show where we make fancy meals and talk about my roommate's murder, uh, because apparently the police believe it's me and my uh, state defender is not good. So uh, I'm just, you know, as part of my plea deal, I am doing some uh, community outreach and educating people uh, about my community, the LGBT community. So I had a little fun game prepared, if that's okay with you. I was gonna do my bird category. Oh, nobody wants but, to talk about birds. We've talked about this a ton. It's not normal that they can mimic things like that. It's, they're probably drones, they're probably robots. All right, well, I'm not gonna get in the way of a community service project. So, Chad, the floor is yours. Please take thank it away. Thank you so much. And I'd like to thank the Montessori Correctional Facility I go to that allowed me to do a research project instead of serving actual time. And okay. So, guys, I have a really uh, fun game uh, based on the LGBT community uh, and, you know, kind of sticking with the dining theme, um, like very much like the Hallmark category you guys played earlier, this will be an individual game, so I'll come to each of you one at a time. Uh, and this game is called Gay Bar or Steakhouse. And it's Ooh. as easy as it sounds. I'm going to give you the name of a legitimate business, and you have to tell me if it's a gay bar or a steakhouse. Uh, so let's start with uh, Garrett. Hi, Garrett. Hello. Hello. Okay, so uh, so first up, Envy. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Steakhouse. Steakhouse is correct. Yay. You know, I, I've always wanted to eat somewhere that incites a very emotional response in the name. Uh, all right, we're gonna move on to the <laughs> next person. Tina, hi, Tina. Hi, Chad. Oh, how are you? I'm so much better now. All right, so Tavern on Kamek. Gay bar. That's correct, it is a Yay. gay bar. We love a three word business title. <laughs> um, <laughs> Next up is going to be Scott. Hi, Scott. Hey, how are you? I'm, <laughs> you know, as good as somebody who's serving time for murder can be doing. Uh, so for you, it's knock. Gay bar. Gay bar is correct. Nice. Also love onomatopoeias in the LGBT community. <laughs> uh, and then I believe uh, we it in for quarantine and the whips is Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Chad. Uh, actually, I lied. I have two more people on that team. I can't count. The days are just blurring together. Uh, for you, it's the Velvet Hammer. Gay bar. Unfortunately, the Velvet Hammer is a steakhouse. What? I am just wow. as you are. <laughs> Where is that? It's it's somewhere. I looked it up and I don't <laughs> want to go there. I hope them they're wrong. I yeah, spell velvety steak. Yeah, uh, yeah. Be I'm a sure. Gay steakhouse. If you live in an area where the velvet hammer operates, please order takeout. Keep this business afloat. I want to <laughs> the pandemic is over. All right. Uh, next up is going to be Brad. Hi, Brad. Hi. Uh, the Tally Ho Tavern. Um, gay bar. Gay bar is correct. Have fun. Good job. Good job. Good answer. Good answer. Okay. okay. And then we have Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hello. All right. The brazen head. <laughs> you fooled me. With the velvet hammer, I fooled myself with the velvet hammer. <laughs> All the customers are fooled. Yeah. You walk in, what? I'm sorry, Rachel. Rachel, first it's Candy and her cane, and now it's this. I. <laughs> None of this is my fault. I take no, no. You can't. You can't pin this on me. Um, head is a cow term. Cattle is. Head is measured like how many is how many head do you have? Steakhouse. Steakhouse is correct. Yay! Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. Well, Chad, thank you for coming on. I mean, I really, I'm sorry that you're, you know, facing incarceration. But if you ever oh. need a character witness or, or uh, oh, I'll think about it. 
Um, you like birds a little too much. I think that's going to affect my credibility on the stand. Well, you know uh, what? You might you might need a couple of birds for pets if you end up in the slammer. So maybe. I can be the next bird man of Alcatraz. Um, but you know, I'm gonna have to head out. I have to hop on another Zoom call. I'm doing a whole other category about Ben Marie's. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. Thank you, Chad. All right. Hi, well, Chad. thank you so Love much, you. Chad. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Chad. Seven <laughs> Gables, everyone. One of, our, <laughs> one of our wonderful friends here on the show. All right, well, I hope you all had fun with that. Each one of those correct answers was worth 100 points. You definitely racked up some extra scratch on that one. We have one category left in this game, and we're going to get into it right now. Now, we want to end the show on some good news because it has been a year. But now we have finally seen some positive results and the rollouts of some vaccines for the coronavirus. And one thing that actually came up in the news last week that I thought was particularly interesting was an Oxford University study of an AstraZeneca vaccine that they were testing ended up having a 90% efficacy rate, but it went up from 70% and they couldn't figure out why until they realized that it was because somebody in the lab screwed up and was giving people half the recommended amount of dosage which for some reason made the vaccine more potent. So because of a accident in the lab that otherwise would have never happened had somebody not been uh, paying more attention, we now have a much more efficient vaccine. And I thought there must be some other times in history when somebody has screwed up and turned it around and made something that we can all enjoy. And we're gonna ask you some questions about that in our last category tonight, which is called happy accidents. These are all questions about times when somebody was trying to do one thing, they got it wrong, and it turned into something else. So, Quarantina and the Waves, this first question is for you. These are worth 300 points. John and Will were two brothers who made a batch of cereal dough but accidentally left it out in the stove for too long. By the time they got back to it, it had fermented and gotten slightly moldy, but they rolled it out and baked it anyway, and in doing so, created the first version of this product. Made the made what were they making cereal? They, they were making a batch of cereal dough. They were boiling a pot of cereal grain, and they accidentally left it on the stove for too long. By the time they had gotten back to it, it had gotten moldy and fermented. But they rolled it out and baked it anyways, and created the first version of this product. Sourdough. Oh, sure. That makes sense. Okay. They rolled it out. I don't know. Yeah. Rolled yeah. it out, but it's fermented. What else yeah, is sourdough that isn't you bake? Normal bread. It's tainted. Brain that is fermented. A couple more seconds, I will need Do an it. answer from you. Sourdough. Me. Sourdough okay. is your final answer? Yeah. Fortunately, sure. sourdough, sourdough is not the correct answer, which means Devil's Daughter, you can steal for 150 points if you know the product. Scott, you look like you looked confident. Oh, that's because I was reflecting confidence that I believed that I saw in your eyes. Great, great. <laughs> so cereal, so it must be grain, um, maybe like grape nuts or oatmeal, something that's a little thicker. Uh, but if it's fermenting, maybe if it's alcoholic, so like a mold wine or something. Okay, a couple more seconds, but let's I will say mold answer wine. from I you. I love it. Say mold, let's say, let's mold say wine. Mold wine. You rolled out mold wine. No, wine granola. is your final answer? No, granola. Granola. Gr granola. granola. Okay, granola. we'll go with granola as your final answer. Either way, neither one of those yeah. is correct. <laughs> uh, so we actually talked about it earlier on the show uh, today. John and Will Kellogg, it's good for keeping <gasps> oh. down the urges. It's cornflakes. It's cornflakes created by accident oh. in Battle Creek. There never was a cornflake. Though. So they were trying to make Ooh. cereal, but they accidentally made cereal? Yes. <laughs> they were making a bland wheat mush that they left on the stove for too long, and then they just said, well, let's just throw it in the oven. And then cornflakes were born. Oh, all right. Okay. And now we all know. Less horny. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and that then, made me less horny for sure. Nobody just now. wanted to get laid. So, I am right. way less horny. Devil's Daughter, this one is for you for 300 points. Everyone knows this toy, but what many don't know is that its creator, Richard Jones, was designing a meter to monitor power on battleships for the U.S. Navy when some tension springs fell to the ground. Noticing how they kept bouncing, he shifted <gasps> and invented this. 
I think you guys, you've got it, right? With Slinky. Slinky. It's got to be Slinky. Slinky. Oh, Slinky. I was thinking Skip It, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought it was Skip It? Final <laughs> answer? I heard, I heard Skip It. Slinky. Slinky. Skip It. We're going to go with Slinky. Uh, sorry. Furby. For, Furby. Furby. Underwear. It was Furby <laughs> underwear. What'd you All say, right. Brad? Sorry. Furby. <laughs> well played. Uh, Kelly flaunting her cornflakes. Uh, oh, I, she is. Not horny. You can see the desire the light leaving her eyes as she eats handful after handful of cornflakes. All right, speaking of uh, Quarantina and the Waves, this one is for you for 300. James Wright was an engineer at General Electric during World War II trying to make a rubber substitute out of silicon. During one of his tests, he ended up with a gooey mess that bounced, and seeing no practical use for it, he decided to sell it to kids instead under this name. What is the toy? It's that's the it's the movie Flubber. Um, it's play no Mine? bounced. It's not Play-Doh. Doesn't bounce. Um, Super balls are made of what? Or is it, fucking help me! I don't know what is it. I don't know what bounces. I'm just kind of silly putty, but that doesn't. I can, I'm sorry, Kelly. Do you want me to repeat it? Yeah, that'd be great. Sure thing. James Wright was an engineer at General Electric during World War II, trying to make a rubber substitute out of silicon. During one of his tests, he ended up with a gooey mess that bounced, and seeing no practical use for it, he decided to sell it to kids instead under this name. Gooey and bouncy. Gooey. Bouncy. A couple more seconds and I will need an answer from you. What is it, Kel? I don't know. Like one of those high bounce balls? I don't know. Are you gonna give me something or I gotta call time? Super ball, Rachel. I like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, Super sure. Ball. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Super Ball is not the correct answer, which means Devil's Daughter can Blinky. get 150 points. <laughs> Got fucking the right answer. I'm getting mad. I'm getting I, think mad. It's, I think it's Play Doh. I think Play Doh yeah. does. I yeah. actually, I think if you if you take a small enough amount of it and you roll it fairly tight, I think it would bounce. So I'll say, I'll, I'll back you up. Final answer? But it's, uh, no, it's, they said it bounced? I think yeah. Play-Doh bounces. Play-Doh, final answer? Yeah. Oh, Brad, oh. sign off on it. Sign I'll off sign on off it. On I it. gotta take it. All right. Sorry, guys. It was Silly Putty. Silly Putty <sighs> accidentally invented in a lab where they were looking for a rubber substitute. You kind of see the connection now, though, when you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I oh, Silly Putty bounces. It feels less bouncy Absolutely. in my mind than Play-Doh even. It gets less bouncy the stickier it gets the more you roll it in crud, but yeah, it bounces. I'm uh, Play Can I point bounces? out that they got what's a thing that looks like a spring? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> this is why the coin flip at the beginning of the show is so important. We ask right. for kids' questions. Yeah. Over to... <laughs> This one is for Devil's Daughter. This one is for you. Patsy Sherman, a chemist for 3M, was trying to make a rubber material that wouldn't deteriorate in jet fuel, but she accidentally dropped some on her shoe. Later, she noticed the rest of her shoe became dirty and stained while the one spot remained clean. After some rebranding, her invention became this household product. Tide stick? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's something like that, though. Right? Yeah, it's got to be some kind of um, cleaning product, right? That keeps grease off, or well, like a magic eraser or something. But yeah, it, if it's a while ago and it it's like a rubber substitute, so let's think of a solid, like a solid cleaning what product. Is, what do you call that? Like a specifically those erasers that are softer and that are used for for art to like clean a canvas or okay, a couple more seconds and i am going to need an answer from you a rubber eraser no let's let's just say eraser yeah eraser final answer yeah, yes. eraser is not correct which means quarantine and the waves you can steal for 150 points what did patsy sherman accidentally invent okay i'm i hate it but can you repeat absolutely uh, Patsy Sherman was a chemist for 3M trying to make a rubber material that wouldn't deteriorate in jet fuel, but she accidentally dropped some on her shoe. Later, she noticed that the rest of her shoe became dirty while the spot she had spilled on stayed clean. After some rebranding, her invention became this household product. Okay. I know it. it. Sounds like Scotch Guard. Mm -hmm. yeah. It prevents Scotch. Is 3M pretty much? That's mm -hmm. their branding. 
yes. Hazard. You're and absolutely we'll right. A couple more seconds, and then that. I do need an answer from yeah. you. Okay. Scotch guard. Okay. Scotch guard. Final answer. Yes. Scotch guard is correct for 150 points. <sighs> Good work. All right. Horny. So. So horny <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> This last one, get some cornflakes. Uh, last one, <laughs> stays with Quarantina and the Waves. Your question for 300. Percy Spencer, an employee at Raytheon, was conducting research on a new radar project when he noticed a melted candy bar in his pocket. Within a small amount of time, he realized he had a new device on his hands, and this product was born. <laughs> oh, yeah, the melted candy bar we all put in our pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can you read the last half of that? He had Absolutely. a Absolutely. Percy Spencer, an employee at Raytheon, was conducting research on a new radar project when he noticed a melted candy bar in his lab coat pocket. Within a small amount of time, he realized he had a new device on his hands, and this product was born. Um, Scoot socket. Is there a year? Did you put a year on there? Nope. That's the entire question. Microwave, I think. Oh. It was melting his, yeah, it was melting yeah. his sausage. Like that radar. Tina, yeah. Tina, Tina. Oh, yes, please. please. The microwave. Oh, like, Final yeah. answer? Yeah. Sure. Tina for the win. It is a microwave for 300 points. And now, now comes the fun part because I am looking at the score and uh, Al, back me up on this one. I have Quarantina and the Waves with 1,800 points. 19. 1,900 points. They just it yet. There Thanks, we go. Al. See, that's why we have Al. And Devil's Daughter should be at 1,800 yep, points, yep. just behind by 100. So good thing you knew that microwave question, Tina, because that would be just, just in the lead. But here's the fun part, because this game's not over yet. It just means that we're about to head into the final round. Did we just oh, skip it? Shit. Oh, <laughs> would, would that we could, Rachel. But unfortunately, this is too much of a nail biter and I'm having too much fun right now. So here's how this is gonna work, Devil's Daughter. I have in front of me three different questions. Each one of them is a different relative difficulty and a different value of points associated with it. The easy question, I say easy in quotes. The easy question is worth 500 points. The medium question is worth 750. And the hardest question is worth 1,000 points. Now, you can choose any one of the three questions, and if you get the question right, you will get the points that are allotted for it. However, if you lose, you will lose the game. But if you win the question, that means that Quarantina and the Waves will have to choose one of the other two remaining questions and try to get that one right so that they can win enough points to take back the lead. So the choice is yours, Devil's Daughter. Do you want to go for a 500 point, a 750 point, or a 1,000 point question? Now, bear in mind, if you go for the 750 point question, you'll force Quarantina and the Waves to take the 1,000 point question. And if you answer the hardest question in the game, you will win the game. Yeah. So the choice is yours. What do you think, gentlemen? Should we just go big? Up, up to you guys. And we don't know the categories at all. It's just like difficulty, right? Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the category as we usually do for all of our final questions, these are all medical trivia. And <laughs> these are all medical questions. A long running theme with the show. I can tell you that ahead of time. I can't tell you what's actually in the questions, but they are all medical themed questions. Oh my God. And uh, the questions are harder based on how many points they are. So the thousand point yeah. question is essentially the hardest question I've written for this entire game. Should we just go down the middle? And yeah, do... maybe we should sure. do the middle one. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, maybe just do the, the easiest one because then it forces them to a harder difficulty no matter what. Oh, and we'd still want to do that. This guy's win. a strategist. I love I, I say we go for five, 500 because then it puts, you yeah, know, if we lose, we lose, no matter what. Yeah, it's a prisoner's yeah. dilemma. We got him. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do the easy one. Yeah. So we're going for the 500 point question. Yes. Okay, so Devil's Daughter, your question for 500 points, potentially the lead and potentially the game is as follows. In 1846, Hungarian doctor Ignaz Semmelweis pioneered this now standard procedure while working in a maternity ward in Vienna. And despite the initial reluctance by his colleagues, today this procedure is standard practice and has saved countless lives. What is the procedure? I think it's washing hands. What? No, so say, I, say think it's a, no I think on. it's a C-section. I think it's a C-section. Sure, I can repeat the question, uh, yeah. 
1846, Hungarian doctor Ignat Samelweis pioneered this now standard procedure while working in a maternity ward in Vienna. And despite the initial reluctance by colleagues, today this procedure is standard practice and has saved countless lives. So Brad's right in terms of like the guy who came up with germ theory was somewhere in Europe and he got like ridiculed. He was put in an insane asylum. And so like washing your hands was part of it. But the way the question is phrased definitely seems like it's a specific procedure. I wouldn't, I don't know if washing hands is a procedure. I was going to say uh, cesarean, cesarean section. Yeah. Do you think it's C-section? Yeah, because I wouldn't really call washing hands a procedure, like a medical procedure. Chris, would you be above phrasing washing hands as a procedure? Um, I would say it is something that anything that anything that you have to do that requires multiple steps is a procedure. I think it might be washing hands. I'm fine. I mean, I'll go with it. I'll go let's with go, it. Let's go with washing hands then. Final answer? Yeah. Yeah. You jumped on it right out of the gate. Hand washing was invented by Ignat Samowitz as a standard medical procedure in uh, a maternity ward in Austria, and that is 500 points. Awesome. Good daughter. work, dudes. You Very tried to talk me out of it. <laughs> Excellently done. I try not to give too many. Uh, I can't give any hints there, but uh, you knew exactly what you were talking about. Uh, down to the to the actual minute details, Garrett. Nicely done. Uh, so that means that right now the score has Devil's Daughter at twenty three hundred. We are going into double <laughs> overtime because now Quarantina, you have to answer either the seven hundred and fifty or the thousand point question. I think this is a pretty easy choice for you. Which one do you want to go with? I'd like to make a statement. If I could. <laughs> Please, Rachel, the floor is yours. Well, we have the option to make statements? <laughs> this is bullshit. This is, our, statements all this the is time. our third time on this show. We have lost in the final round every time. It's true. I have just met you gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> you seem very nice, actually. You're, you're funny. You're smart. I would really like it if you all die. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of my statement. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nicely done, Rachel. Uh, so I assume you'll be going with the 750 point question. Very much so. Unless anyone has an objection. No. 750? Now, yeah, I will, I will remind you, if you get this, you win the game. There will be no rebuttal after this. So if you oh, yeah. get this question correctly, the, the, the question game is, is yours. What not to say during a pandemic? So fun. That I'd like them to die? Yeah, did it? No, from something else. From something We're all else. friends. Here. I already know about hand washing, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, no. Clearly, it like from an exactly. immediate like just drop. Be a, like a yeah. not a prolonged disease. No suffering. I just love community. I know. It's like, I feel like this, the, the beauty of the show is that it brings us all together. Uh, so, all right. So, Rachel and uh, the rest of Quarantina and the Waves, this yeah, is your question. Oh, the game is still happening. For the game, <laughs> lean in on this one because you're gonna want to hear it. This okay. Back, this bacteria, first discovered by Carl Eberth in 1879, wouldn't get its official name until a veterinary scientist discovered it was the cause of a disease in pigs known as hog cholera in the late 1800s. In the early 20th century, it would become infamous to humans as the cause of typhoid fever and other diseases, I'm sorry, typhoid fever among other diseases. What is the name of the bacteria that I am talking about? And I can repeat that for you if you need me to. Yeah, do that. Sure thing. We're looking for a bacteria, first discovered by Carl Eberth in 1879, but it wouldn't get its official name until a veterinary scientist discovered that it was the cause of a disease in pigs known as hog cholera in the late 1800s. In the early 20th century, it would become infamous to humans as the cause of typhoid fever, among other diseases. What is the bacteria? That I am talking about. Okay, so my first thought is salmonella, but that's probably not it. What causes trichinosis? That's what I was trying to think of, the trichinosis. That was the pork thing that I was like trying to think. Right. But um, um, all I that's can the disease, not the bacteria that causes it. E. coli is all I can think of, and I think that's not. There's also botulism, but that again is the disease, right. not bacteria. Typhoid. What causes typhoid? 
aside from that lake. Watched so much Survivor, I feel like I would know. <laughs> it's almost like going to medical school. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, food safety? Oh, I don't know. Um, Gulp. Okay. Um, no. I mean, salmonella is definitely a chicken and egg kind of thing. Just chickens? Okay, then I'll, then that's gone. Um, am I am I doing the thing that we did with um, flowers and plants and no. trying to dissect oh, things you're too much? Dra dragging up old shows. To <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> over dissecting and overthinking and just. Uh, we tend to give you a little extra time because yeah. it's the final round. But, what is um, staff? Is staff staphylococcus? Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus. Is that something? That is something. I don't think it's foodborne. It is very much a thing, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's foodborne, though. Um, Gosh, I don't know. Typhoid fever a foodborne illness, though? No. No. Because pigs just got it from being pigs. And what a pig just, just they roll around in shit mud. and they just pick up as a. Okay, we'll need you to start dialing in on an answer for yeah, me. Hello? Yeah, it, what is typhoid? Let's... Ty well, I can't answer that for you. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> 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 typhoid is, is not like a GI disease. It's like a... It, cause staph... I don't, I'm, I'm asking, like... Because staph is a skin thing. Like, but you, you get, get it from, like... a staph infection. Stuff. You yeah. get it from, and it's an infection. It's a disease. Okay, I'm I'm okay with that. If you want, if we yeah, want to see a staph, right. Staphylococcus. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's just do it. That's our answer. Final answer. Mm-hmm. Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus. Yes. I just want to point out, you all very much, yes. and Rachel, Rachel, if you didn't notice before, I finished my whiskey before we got to the end of this. The correct answer that I was looking for was salmonella. Oh. Salmonella is the bacteria that causes typhoid <sighs> as well as other gastrointestinal diseases. First discovered in 1879, but it is named after Daniel Elmer Salmon who found it in pigs um. in the late 1800s. And Typhoid Mary was a cook. That's how it got, she passed it. You're, a, you're, you're not a, a, helping us make friends right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, no, I, am, I, am, I am so terribly sorry to have to report that to Quarantina and the Waves, uh, but unfortunately that means that you didn't get the answer right, which means you didn't get the points, which means our big winner for tonight by a narrow, narrow lead after a hard-fought final round is the Devil's Daughter. Devil's Daughter, congratulations, you are our big Great winner. Great job, guys. Good game. Tonight. Uh, good great game, game good to game, good game. Ellie's like, eat my ass. Good game. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get the devil's so daughter close. in just a quick second, but before we do, Quarantina and the waves. Oh my god, that was a nail biter. And honestly, I know I'm supposed to be impartial, but I really was pulling for you on that one. Uh, but but thank you so much for coming on. We love having you on. We really hope that this doesn't deter you from coming back for a fourth time because we really do love seeing you every time you come back on the show. Uh, so before we split tonight, can, can people find uh, the rest of you, Quarantina, and the waves somewhere? <laughs> Please tell our audience at home where they I can love find this you. Show. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm running! <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, I think we may have lost Quarantina and the waves. <laughs> oh boy! For a moment. December twenty eighth. Uh, check out the Empire Review YouTube channel. Uh, e m p i r e r e v u e. Uh, we're dropping a special little uh, holiday gift for you all. Um, that is all I'm gonna say about it because it's not finished yet. I love right. you. Fantastic. Bye. We we, we yeah. love you. We love you too, and we look forward to seeing that. And please make sure that you check that out. And if you send us a link, we'll put it on our show page so people can find it. And that moves us over to Devil's Daughter. Devil's Daughter, our big winner for tonight. Congratulations. How are you feeling on your win? Ooh. Guilty? 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 Guilty like... seems like a good answer. 
She had it. Nope. She had the right answer, and then it was Get devastating. Get the scissors, F. Okay, time. We do that. If, if I'm gonna add insult to, if I'm gonna add uh, insult to injury here, please, um, please. here's here's the thing. You actually, you actually won a prize tonight. We have something for you for your big win. Uh, I don't think I'm cool. in a state of mind right now to, to break the news, but maybe Chad Seven Gables wants to tell you what you want. <laughs> Chad, can you please uh, tell Devil's Daughter what their big win was tonight? Absolutely, Chris. So you may have heard of the Midas Touch, but now you three can have the Midas Shuffle with these solid gold colored playing cards. Now I should Whoa. point out that I'm really solid wow. gold. We don't have that kind of money here on this show, <laughs> but enjoy. Uh, and, uh, and and Devil's Daughter, uh, for the folks who are watching who have not seen you or, or listened to your podcast before, where can they find you? Can you tell us a little bit about where uh, people can see you in the near future? Um, so we have, uh, you can find us on our podcast network. We have, uh, if you type in Devil's Daughter into the, the podcast app, all of our podcasts come up, but it's Gear Diarrhea, Blocked, uh, Experience the World, Talk and Shop, Campfire, and coming up, Wines, Wines, and Wines. And then we have uh, a streaming show called Holidays from Hell coming December 18th. That's going to be uh, a YouTube Live, I think. And you can find that on Facebook and Instagram. And we also have uh, four different workshops for improv and sketch and, you know, whatever. And they're, um, you can find those on our Facebook and Instagram. All right, fantastic. And so, yeah, so you can click on their uh, show page. Uh, we posted the link earlier before the show tonight. We can uh, update that later if anybody's looking for them. But thank you again so much, Devil's Daughter, for coming on tonight. We love you guys. Uh, and uh, and we hope you enjoy those solid gold playing cards. We're getting late in the show here, so we're going to wrap up. But before we do, we just want to say uh, thank you so much to everybody for watching tonight. Really quick, uh, tonight is the deadline. We just found out that we're in the running for a nomination for Chicago Reader's Best Of for Digital Improv Sketch Show. Oh, so nice. if you're watching this live and if you're in the chat, maybe Al or Rebecca, somebody can drop the link in the chat. Um, check out the website real quick and just nominate us. Uh, they're picking the top five votes to go on to the finals and it would be super super cool even just to be nominated so uh, if you're watching right now if you like what you saw and you kind of want to support us just uh, click that link and give us a vote uh, we also have a big special coming up uh, next week is going to be our last game show for the year we got one left in the tank but then after that we have a surprise in store for you we're actually putting together a nice little holiday sketch show for you that we know you're gonna enjoy. So be sure to look forward to that in the near future as well. But for the time being right now, uh, thank you again for watching. Thank you to both of our teams for coming on tonight. If you wanna reach out to us, you can email us quarantinethegameshow at gmail.com or you can find us on Facebook at Quarantine Game Show. And uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And as we like to say every week, stay safe, stay sane, and take care of each other. Thank you so much. We hope you had a great evening. Enjoy. Thank you. Hi, Thank you. Hi everybody. Hi.